Astrid Silva, executive director of Dream Big Nevada, which helps empower the immigrant community, and who uh, I have a uh, years-long admiration for. Uh, Astrid, it's always great uh, seeing you. Just moments when ago, incoming Trump... One of the yes. Just just a few moments ago, Ingrid, incoming Trump border czar Tom Homan had this message for mayors and governors opposed to Trump's immigration plans, including mass deportations. This is what he said just a couple of minutes ago. Listen to this. So for the mayors and, the, and governors want to step in the way, look, you can either help or get the hell out of the way because we're going to do this job. Pres the, the American people give President Trump a mandate. We're going to protect this country. And we're going to force the immigration laws. And so, you know, protect Americans and force immigration and force immigration laws. Uh, I guess it's depending on how you see what those actions look like. What are you concerned about? What are immigrant families telling you? More than anything, I think it's this this false um, labeling us criminals. I think a lot of people for many, many years have said, we want to get rid of the criminals, we want to get rid of the criminals, but who are criminals? I'm a criminal based on a lot of people's um, uh, definition of what an undocumented immigrant is. And as we just saw what Mr. Homan said, um, there is no there is no stopping this, this avalanche of, uh, it's just hate towards immigrants because when it comes down to people talking about us, when they tell you, oh, it's not my land, Landscaper. It's not my kid's friend. It's not. They classify us differently. And so um, right now, a lot of the fear is that that people are telling me, what if I'm the person that gets rounded up? And the reality is, as we are hearing, it is a very big possibility. Um, J.D., I, I, you and I have talked many times about it. Even doing these types of interviews, even having spoken out uh, against uh, what uh, the, the former president did um, throughout all these years, that puts a target on many of us. And for many, many years, a lot of us have had to leave the country, have had to self-deport because of the activism we've done. And so a lot of uh, a lot of our dreamers right now, their biggest concern is, um, will I be able to work? Will our work permits be removed? We gave up all our information. I think uh, people don't understand that when you fill out I, uh, listening to to your earlier segment, um, I believe that that uh, the new attorney general will have to go under less uh, background checks than I do every single year and a half, uh, because I have to get a background check every single year and a half to just be able to have the opportunity to work and provide services to my community. And, you know, there are, what, 22 million Americans and people in the United States that lived in a mixed immigration status household. There are more than 500,000 DACA recipients right now in our country. The DACA community contributes nearly $14 billion to our economy. More than 200,000 were frontline workers during the pandemic. Trump tried to end DACA. He did it. And then blocked by the Supreme Court at different times, he said he was willing to, to negotiate DACA. What do you foresee for Trump's second term? And where is the compassion and the respect for these people? I, I think it's it's a very thin um, line there that that is no longer existent with uh, with this administration. For many years, even our our allies, our our families would tell us, you know, you're going to be okay. You're a dreamer. You're educated. You speak English. And I think we realize now that is not something that it, you know. For so many people who tried to assimilate um, themselves because they wanted to be uh, they wanted to be accepted by the United States. Right now, we're seeing that's not going to be enough. Enough for for these folks, as you as we have heard Mr. Homan say, it's going to be entire families that are deported. They don't care about United States citizens. They don't say we're going to leave behind children. Um, you know, right now one of the talking points about oh houses will be opened up. What is going to happen to our economy when folks that have bought their houses uh, under DACA, which is completely legal, are able to be here because we're, we're removed? There's so many different things that uh, people in their hatred, in their um, knee-jerk reactions to say, uh, we want all of them gone. The thing is, J.D., I think one of one of the, the things that you and I, um, being different generations of immigrant families, we've seen in the past, it was very easy to point us out and say, oh, well, that person doesn't speak English or that person hasn't, um, you know, they haven't they haven't grown up here. 
we have. Our families are now 30, 40 years in the United States. And so being able to go and do a, 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 a raid in a store will be very difficult without getting all those citizens involved. And so um, it, it's fear. Right now it's fear and um, our families are, are preparing.